All right, for more on this, now I'm joined by Lawson Naidu from the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution. Uh, Lawson, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. What do you make of this decision? Uh, well, good evening, Shahan. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, uh, it's a long overdue decision. We had the, uh, the decision of the Judicial Conduct Tribunal in April this year, and uh, the matter was then referred to the uh, Judicial Services Commission uh, to uh, accept or reject that report. Meetings of the JSC had been postponed on a couple of previous occasions, so we're very pleased that it went ahead today. And the, the JSC has now taken a decision to refer the gross misconduct finding against uh, uh, Judge uh, President Schlope to the National Assembly to take a decision whether to remove him from office. So take us through that process then. The National Assembly, of course, has final say, and there has to be a two-thirds majority, I understand. That is correct. So the matter will now be referred by the uh, JSC uh, once they've provided the, their reasons, which they've said that they will do in the, in the next day or so. And uh, so the decision of the JSC, together with the uh, uh, what they refer to in their press statement as the majority and minority reports, and one, one assumes that the findings of the Judicial Conduct Tribunal, which we must remember was a unanimous decision of that three-person panel, uh, should also be referred to the National Assembly so the Assembly uh, can have all the information before it uh, when it takes the decision whether to uh, remove uh, Schlope from office uh, through an impeachment process, as you say, with the two-thirds majority. And uh, if that uh, motion is passed in Parliament, the President must then remove uh, uh, judge President Schlope uh, from his status as a judge and his removal as Judge President of the Western Cape Division of the High Court. Any implications for the High Court, that Western Cape Division of the High Court? Well, I think, uh, you know, we've seen uh, uh, significant levels of instability in that court. Uh, you know, there's lots of tension in that court. There's, you know, judges have uh, uh, came out in a public statement some time ago uh, in another, another matter, which also relates to uh, Judge President Schlope, uh, involving uh, uh, and, and also suspended a judge from that uh, division, Mushtaq Parker, uh, and where the judges uh, you know, um, basically lined up and said that they would not uh, uh, sit on the bench or uh, with uh, Judge Parker because of the uh, misconduct that they believe that, that he was guilty of, in that he had provided uh, contradictory evidence to the uh, to the JSC in relation to, the, uh, to a complaint against uh, Judge President Schlobe, as I say, albeit in a different matter. And is there any other avenue for uh, Judge Don Schlobe to actually challenge this decision from the JSC? Well, I think uh, Judge President Schlobe has made it clear that he's going to challenge the decision of the Judicial Conduct Committee and that now I suppose the decision of the Judicial Service Commission uh, in the courts, I'm not sure the basis on which any uh, uh, any such claim can be laid by uh, Judge President Schlope. But uh, given the, the long history of this uh, saga, Shahan, it would be very surprising if uh, this is the, uh, uh, the the last piece of litigation we see in this matter. It is a, it's a case that has dragged on for uh, well over 13 years. The initial complaint was laid by the justices of the Constitutional Court back in April of 2008. And through various uh, pieces of litigation uh, avenues that uh, Judge President Schlope has sought to exploit to delay the, uh, the hearing of this matter. So uh, one would not be surprised at all if uh, he finds some uh, legal mechanism to challenge these decisions as well. All right. Thanks so much for the insight. Appreciate it. Lawson Naidu, CASEX Executive Secretary.